Hi, it's Earth Computer, and welcome to the second video on hash sets. Today I'm going to be talking about a specific a practical application of them, permaloaders, uh, which, in case you don't know, is a type of contraption in Minecraft to keep your um, like contraptions, other contraptions, permanently loaded even without a player there. Before we start, I want to give a quick shout out to Nembon. Um, he was the guy who originally discovered the permaloading technique. Uh, this video here was uh, the main inspiration for this video and it's also my inspiration for looking into hash sets and technical Minecraft as a whole. It's definitely worth a watch, the link is in the description. I would also like to shout out my hash set visualizer. It's an interactive way to learn how the Java hash set works and I'm going to be using it later in the video. If you struggled in the previous video this might be helpful to you or if you just want to have a go, that's fine. Either way, the URL is earthcomputer.net forward slash hash set. The Minecraft world is split into 16 by 16 block chunks. Each square on this grid represents a chunk. Chunks can be identified by looking at the northwest corner of the chunk, making this chunk, chunk 00, zero and this chunk, chunk 1, minus 2. As you probably noticed, the x-axis increases east, but the z-axis increases south, which might be a little bit confusing at first. This is a diagram of Minecraft's chunk loading algorithm. Chunks can be loaded in all sorts of ways, including by the player and by a redstone contraption. Every autosave, all chunks which are loaded uh, and are not within range of a player, or within the world spawn point, is added to the set of chunks which are scheduled to be unloaded. Every subsequent tick, 100 chunks from this set are unloaded, and this continues until the set is empty. If, however, before this can happen, uh, the game tries to access a block in a chunk in this set, the chunk is removed from this set, and the chunk will not be unloaded. This is called unscheduling unloading and is the basis for how permaloading works. I said all that rather quickly, so don't worry if you didn't get all of it, because what's important is what I'm about to say next. Surely, if, uh, if you wanted to keep all chunks loaded, all you would have to do is take this transition, right? What's the point in building a permaloader full of 100 chunks if all you have to do is take this path rather than taking this path? Well, the answer is, um, unfortunately, there's no known way, at least to my knowledge, to um, take this path immediately after the autosave. The game will um, take this path first. So, what you have to do is you have to sacrifice a hundred chunks. You, um, you have to, you know, pick a hundred chunks to be unloaded so that the other chunks are delayed to the next game tick so that you have a chance to take this transition on them instead which is to access a block in that chunk. These 100 bait chunks are what make up the permaloader. As you can see this is a hash set so this is what we're interested in really how can we uh, pick 100 chunks that appear first in the hash set before any others. And this is what the remainder of the video is going to be about. So in order to proceed, we must first understand the XOR operator. So what XOR does is it takes two inputs, uh, which are either 0 or 1, and it will test if either but not both of them are 1, and output a 1, otherwise it will output a 0. So another way of looking at that is um, if the left and the right are equal it will output 0 and if they're not equal it will output 1. So XOR uh, works for not just 0 and 1 but um, any number if you represent them in binary like this um, and what it does is it just takes each pair of binary digits and applies XOR on them individually. So for example with these two numbers it will do 1 XOR 0 which is 1 1 XOR 1 is 0, 
zero, x or zero is zero, and so on all the way along until we get this number here as the output. Now one key thing to notice here is that if uh, two numbers are equal, the XOR of them is zero, um, kind of trivially, because if they're if the digits are equal then it's uh, zero, so and it's done digit wise, so you know it's all zero. And um, obviously if they're not equal then the XOR of them will be non zero. So how does Minecraft compute the hash of chunk positions when unloading chunks? Well, um, basically all it does is it takes the x position of the chunk and takes the z position of the chunk and xors them together and that's the hash. So really bad hash function by the way, uh, but there you go, that's how it's done. Um, and then um, it goes through something called, um, or something which a name I just made up called a, an x hash and um, stands for xor hash and it's internal to the hash set um, and what it does is it takes uh, the top 16 bits of the hash that uh, had been computed uh, moves it down to the bottom 16 bits and XORs them together um, and then leaving the top 16 bits unchanged so let's, let's just go through an example to make that clear uh, let's say we want to compute the hash of the chunk minus one zero so in case you didn't know, minus one in binary is just all ones, and zero is obviously just zeros. Um, and so when we XOR them together, we get um, lots of ones XOR with lots of zeros, which means you just have the ones left over, because you know one XOR zero is one. Um, so that's the first part of the hash. So the hash code of the chunk is all ones, which is still minus one. Um, but then um, the x hash, which is what the hash set really uses, um, you get the um, original hash code here, which is all one still, and then you take the top 16, so that's uh, this bit here, and you copy them down to here, and then do this XOR. So 1 equals 1, that means the, ha the XOR goes to 0, 0, 0, like this, 0, 0, so there's 16 bits of zeros in the bottom, and then these ones are left unchanged on the high bits, so these are 16 bits of ones on the top. And so 16 ones and then 16 zeros happens to be um, the binary representation for minus 65,536, which is a multiple of um, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Um, so this um, this chunk position would actually fall in bucket zero of the hash set. Let's have a quick reminder on what order stuff comes out of a hash set. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go onto this visualizer here, and we're going to change the preset to Minecraft chunk pause long, which happens to be the same kind of thing as we are doing here, or the same hash function as we're using here, and we're just going to add some um, chunk positions to the hash set to experiment. So just added two seven, two x or seven is five. You to work it out, and the x hash is five, and so it goes into bucket five. And then let's um, pick some more numbers. Let's go three, eight, and that turns out to be eleven. Uh, let's go 7, 4, and let's go for uh, minus 1, 0, which we calculated a moment ago. You can see it's 0, the x hash is minus 65, 5, 36, as you might expect um, by now. And then let's go just one more, 8, 3. Right, there you go. Uh, so now let's look at the order this comes out of the hash set by pressing iterator and you can see that it goes from left to right um, in terms of the buckets uh, and then inside the buckets it goes um, first in first out almost uh, for the moment it is so minus one zero is leftmost seven four is next then two seven then three eight then eight three 
but if we were to put 83 in before 38 then that would have appeared first instead. So back to the problem of trying to find 100 chunks that come out of the hash set before the others. So having learnt about what we have about XOR, um, it would seem reasonable to pick chunks which have the same X coordinate as the Z coordinate. So for example, chunk 0, 0, we can add that, and we can see that the hash is 0, and therefore falls into bucket 0. Uh, similarly, we can add 1, 1, and that uh, goes into bucket 0, 2. 2, 2, same thing. In fact, any equal uh, X and Z coordinate will fall into bucket 0. So these are the chunks with equal x and z coordinates. These are going to fall into bucket 0. Now, are there any others in this region which fall into bucket 0? Well, yes, we've already seen one. It's chunk minus 1, 0 right here. In fact, I'm just going to tell you that the all the chunks on the other diagonal here will also fall into bucket 0. I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer to figure out why. Alright, so uh, next question. Are there any other chunks <laughs> in this region which fall into bucket 0? Um, no, not in this region. However, unfortunately the answer is yes if you g go out very far in the Minecraft world. So once we add our 100 chunks to bucket 0, uh, not only do we end up with this mess here, um, I don't know if you can remember, but um, hash sets will um, treeify their buckets once they reach a, reach a certain threshold. So this is now just this massive tree of, um, of chunks, as you can see. Um, but, perhaps less obviously, if we go to the very far right, um, you, will, you will see that we have 256 buckets, which means that um, in order to still be in bucket 0, you have to have a chunk which has a hash of 0 modulo uh, 256. So in theory, these are the closest chunks to 0, 0 that could still be unloaded even when a permaloader is running, which means that they could still be in bucket 0 even when you've got those 100 chunks also in bucket 0. Um, so those are, in case you can't read, 256, 0, 0, 256, minus 257, 0, and 0, minus 257. So, in theory, if you want a um, completely foolproof permaloader, you have to start worrying about the stuff as soon as you reach 256 chunks out from the origin. However, in practice, uh, all you have to do is uh, cause a whole ton of chunks to unload at once to immediately expand the uh, bucket count to bigger numbers like this. Um, so to do that, you just have to log a player out um, in a place where they will actually unload chunks, so like not the spawn chunks, not near other players, and stuff like that. And then the bucket count will explode to these um, bigger values depending on the view distance. Um, and yeah, so if, for example, you have a view distance of 12, then you are going to end up with a bucket count of 1024 by doing that. And then you don't have to worry about chunks uh, until you reach um, coordinates like 1024 zero, um, or further than 1024 chunks out. Um, the um, bucket count never decreases again until server restart once you um, once you increase it. So yeah. So that was my second video on hash sets and first and probably last video on permaloaders. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, again, I recommend you go and watch Nembon's video as well. Uh, it's a little bit old, a little bit um, outdated, but still definitely worth a watch. Um, yeah, there's like a couple of uh, maybe like outdated or incorrect pieces of information in there, but yeah, um, definitely worth it, especially if you um, want a different viewpoint than 
the one this video gave you. There are still a few other ways that hash sets can be exploited inside Minecraft, um, so I want to go through them as well, but not in today's video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.